now, Emmy and Golden Globe Award-winning actor Alan Alda. He's now a visiting professor at Stony Brook University Center for Communicating Science, leading improv work. Oh, I want to do an improv workshop with we're you. Are we're, you we're doing me? it right now. Oh my God! <laughs> I love, I love improv. Oh, can you imagine doing that with him? All right. Uh, did that in their past. Okay, he does improv workshops with scientists to help them learn how to communicate complex concepts in a more understandable way. <laughs> that, okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay, so, so that, that, that is a great idea. We, 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 we want to go there, uh, but let's first talk about this week. Alan Arvis passed away. Yes, obviously, yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah, I was very sorry to see that. Yeah, uh, but uh, worked with you on MASH. Or, yeah, and a wonderful guy, and so believable in his character. We used to sit, and when he first came on the show, I'd sit with him between shots, and I'd ask him questions about psychiatric theory. Yeah, because he was and so And he started believable. to look at me like, what is this guy talking? He didn't know anything about yeah. it, but I thought he was a psychiatrist. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, I didn't know he wasn't they knew right, he was an right. actor but it just sort of took over yeah it was just he was he was he was great as Absolutely everybody great. did on the show so so let's talk about what you're doing at Stony Brook University it's fascinating um, you know I was, a, I was a lawyer and actually we did some criminal I, or we did some some defense work for doctors mm -hmm. and we say hey mm -hmm. idiots 90 percent of your problem is a communication problem mm -hmm. from the very beginning yeah. you would sit there and tell your patients what's going on why it's happening and explain it to yeah. them they would you know they you'd build a better and I've relationship heard, i've heard from several members of congress that they cannot understand scientists when they come to present their work to them and look and look for funding why would you give money to somebody whose work you don't understand? Doesn't make sense. So, so what do you? What so do what, you do we, what we do? We don't only work on them. We don't. We in, in, improvisation is an innovative way to help them relate to the people they're talking to, and so that gets a lot of attention because it's innovative. But we also teach writing and all forms of writing. And what we're trying to do is make it clear and vivid, not dumb it down, not make it oversimplified, but make it so that you. For instance, we started a contest called the Flame Challenge, where, they, where scientists around the world were invited to explain what a flame was so an 11-year-old could understand it. Right. Mm. And thousands of kids around the world, all over, like, uh, like from Australia, every, all kinds of places, judged the scientists' oh, entries. How great is and, that? And it brought the scientists up to oh, face incredible. what it's like to be, to be simple but, but accurate. Now, how fascinating, you know, left brain, right brain. Um, you, you have these people who are so brilliant in their field, yeah. and yet very limited sometimes mm -hmm. in being able to express well, themselves you know, in a way that an 11 year old or, well, if an 11 -year -old or a 40 year old so can right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but, but the, there's a good reason why they don't talk in everyday language because to do their work, sometimes one word will stand in for five pages of very technical procedures. Right. And they should talk like that, and they should be precise like that when talking to one another, if they're in the exact same field. But when one scientist tries to communicate with another who's in a completely different field, sometimes they use the same word to mean different things. So they really need to talk with more clarity, even when talking with one another. And the, again, Mika, the importance is obviously when they go to Congress, when they testify, when they're trying to get funding for the critical R&D projects. I mean, it really makes a difference. So how much does expression have to do with what you're teaching? I mean, is it finding just the right words or is a whole manner of communicating yeah, that you know, needs to You know, change? one of the things we're finding is that the improvisation makes them relate to the people they're talking to so that they are thinking about what the, uh, the person listening is thinking while they're talking, which changes the way they talk to them, makes it a more personal communication. And that also spills over into the writing. When they write, they write in a more direct way. Not, they don't spray information at the reader. Or right. the audience. With right. the stereotype of scientists, you, you would, it's kind of a joke and it probably help them with their social skills too. No, and, and you know, for me in, this, in, the, in the financial world, it would work too when you have, you know, economists coming into high schools and talking about liquidity and derivatives and everyone's yeah. got a blank face. I mean, I think there's something that could be transferred to uh, other fields as there, well. It really can be Maybe transferred. Maybe you, you could help Brian because I shut down when he does the business report. <laughs> I heard him a minute ago. Shut down. I come over and Mika says, oh, you're still here? <laughs> <laughs> Scares me. But you know, the, I mean, the whole thing like sequestration. What is that? Right. It sounds like something bad to a bull, right? I yeah. mean, it just doesn't sound good. <laughs> I mean, that 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 could be explained better. So, you know, I, I actually was Robert Gibbs, who's now out of the White House. We were sitting 
on the set and the president was trying to talk about the filibuster yeah. and he was going out oh. to the audience and he said something like instead of saying the filibuster the president finally said to this audience and back in congress they're, they're they're playing some political game to even keep the vote from coming up on the senate floor and i turned to gibbs and i was like thank god that's uh, people can understand that yeah. so much better yeah. than filibuster yeah. or sequestration that's it you it to makes use personal difference. terms like that and to understand that the person you're talking to is processing this in a certain way, that makes a channel of communication open up between the both of you. Right. And if it's not two-way, it's not communication. And, and by the way, that's not dumbing it down. No. Because no. a lot of people say, oh, what, you, you've got to dumb it down for the no, American wrong. people? No, guess what? The American people, they're not sitting there reading the Congressional right. Quarterly. They're not sitting there. I mean, they're working, trying to get their kids you know, through school, trying to get them into a college, trying to keep their jobs. So, yeah, it's the responsibility to communicate. It's right. And the fact that they haven't learned the technical terms doesn't mean they're, they're stupid or that they, they can't understand what the terms mean. Right. If you can speak in language that they can understand, they'll get it. I, I just wonder. Oh, go ahead, Brian. And then no, I just want to ask how Hawkeye Pierce and Senator Brewster yeah. gets involved in this particular well, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to, like, destroy your image or anything, but I'm not those people. <laughs> no, no, I know. Oh, my God. God. But one of the best <laughs> actors of our time just, is, just like, you know, just like you, you, you mistook Alan Arbus for We asked him for some <laughs> counseling. True. I know, exactly. you're right. It's, you it can't goes help all it. around. It, it happens to all of us. So, so, no, how, how, did you, how did you get into this? Uh, well, it came out of doing the science shows I did. I, for 15 years or so, I've done science shows on public television. And, and we had simple conversations the scientists and I and they were unscripted I didn't know what the questions were I didn't know what the answers were and the real scientist the real person behind the scientist came out because I wouldn't give up if I didn't get it I just said no I'm grabbing by the lapel <laughs> sometimes about? I grabbed them by the cheeks yeah. what are you talking about mm -hmm. yeah. and they would get so much more human with me because they were finally focused on me it was they were really trying to get into my head instead of mm -hmm. lecture me I actually, mm -hmm. I actually say that to my kids. I know, I say it to you. They start talking. Um, about, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, so yeah. Talk slower. Dad's exactly. not smart. Well, that, that, that's sarcasm. All right. Just really quickly, though, because it seems to me sometimes it's not just finding the right words, but that connection yeah, that's, and that that's eye it. contact and the emphasis. Because sometimes, even if you don't understand the words, if you're not a scientist, you can understand what the scientist is saying. Isn't that the case if they are helping? in their actual yeah, physicality so. of communication. I think, I think paying attention to the other person makes the other person much better able to hear what you're saying. If they think this isn't really meant for me, this is what you say in general, this is right. your boilerplate thing, we're kind of trained not to listen to commercials. No. You know? Well, you huh? could do some work here with us. <laughs> we should do an exercise. We need to have become Maybe you an have one. For, all right. We'll, we'll have you back. Would <laughs> okay. you do that with us? Sure, sure. Improv? And then you can do the economics. Yeah, we'll, have, we'll help him along. I love I, I'll try not to shut down, but okay. this is for the bell. I just. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Alan Alda, thank, thank you very thank much. You much. We really thank appreciate it. This up, is great. Up work. next, what, if anything, did we learn today? Oh,